Hello, my name is Javier. I lead design for Material Adaptive. And I'm Anisha. I lead product for Material Adaptive. And today, we're here to show you how to design apps that adapt seamlessly across devices. We will give you the shared language we develop for designers and engineers to use as they create adaptive user interfaces that are cohesive and delightful for our users. And we'll reveal how we applied it to create a new pane system, offered now in the form of APIs via the new Material 3 Adaptive Library. We'll end up by applying all of these new concepts to real examples, illustrating the design rationale behind all of the new adaptive guidance and APIs. Firstly, you might be wondering, what is an adaptive app? Javier, can you define that for us? Sure thing, Anisha. Adaptive apps respond to conditions such as the window size, the folded state, the input method, or a user preference. We use conditions to provide a granular and meaningful way to understand context so that we can adjust the layout of an app in order to optimize the user's experience accordingly. The natural next question is, why is designing adaptive apps important? There are currently more than 300 million active large screen devices between foldables, tablets, and Chromebooks. As Android hardware manufacturers continue to build more large screen devices, including foldables, this number is expected to grow. We have also seen gains in business metrics in Android apps that did optimize for large screen devices. You can check out the large screen stories on developer.android.com to see many examples of such apps. But Javier, why can't we just stretch the UI? What else is there to do to make an app adaptive? So that's a really good question, Anisha. We have found that users are not excited by large screen experiences that simply replicate the mobile functionality on a larger scale. What's the added value for the user on a large screen if it's the same experience that they have on mobile? That's a great point. There isn't any additional value for the users if we just stretch the UI, and it makes it harder to use the app. Also, on larger screens, users have more space to travel. I imagine the mental model changes when interacting with an app on foldables and tablets. Yeah, it's very insightful. In large screens, users expect to accomplish more of what they can do on web and desktop. The mental model, like you said, for the user is no longer that of the on-the-go phone. Rather, they're willing to spend more time on each device. Right now, we see a lot of apps stretching, which is simply matching functionality with their phones, rather than really meeting the user's expectations of a large, differentiated, large screen experience that can be more noble and exciting. And don't forget, end users can change the orientation of the device they're on, too. So rather than just making UI elements bigger and stretched out, as makers, we must really think about how to better utilize the conditions that we understand on the large screen. Let's dive into the principles of adaptive design to establish a shared language designers and developers can use to create adaptive UI. So we heard you. Designing and developing for large screen devices is difficult, and it requires a lot of effort. We want to give you, Android app makers, solutions that reduce the complexity and cost of building and maintaining rich adaptive apps so that you can just focus on the behavior and functionality unique to yours. When we started cataloging the problems makers face when building for large screens, we heard a lot of pain around navigation. It's quite a suboptimal experience for users to get the same navigation bar they get on phones, but just stretched out on a large screen device. And we found out that it is a struggle to have to decide which navigation component is most appropriate for each window size class, and quite costly to implement it separately for tablets and foldables. So we are introducing the Adaptive Navigation Suite. The Adaptive Navigation Suite automatically offers the appropriate navigation variant for each window size class. And we're excited because it takes into account user expectation, UI coherence, and ergonomic needs for each window size class. So that on a compact window size class, it serves up a navigation bar. And on a medium and an expanded window size class, it serves up a navigation rail. Adaptive Navigation Suite is now available in code in beta. Check out developer.android.com to learn how to use it. We are working on adding more adaptive components in M3 for you. After navigation, we identified another very difficult and time-consuming problem with building adaptive apps, which is how elements get arranged on the screen, better known as layout. Yes. So when we started trying to offer makers adaptive layouts, we learned that opinionated defaults do go a long way. So material design introduced canonical layouts 
such as list detail and supporting pane a few years ago to provide quick design guidance for how to utilize the space in a way that optimizes the user's experience on large screens. Now, this is where things got interesting. To create guidance for our canonical layouts, we had to abstract the layouts people had been trying to build. And during that process, we adopted a new way of thinking in flexible containers called panes. So you might be thinking pane, like, like the panes in a window, and you'd be right. Just like panes make up the layout of a real world window, in an interface, panes are the foundational units of a layout. And we learned that the benefits of thinking in panes are that we can group content into them. Then we can establish relationships between complementary sets of content in our applications. And we get improved orchestration through adaptation strategies that can be applied to each one of these panes all of which results in an improved use of space and ultimately better experience of our users on large screen devices. So our guidance to all makers now is to put all of your content into panes, not screens. This is the first step to adapting your UI across devices. When we started building materials canonical layouts, we quickly realized that we want you to be able to make your own custom adaptive layouts. So we started building up a system of panes that would enable not only materials canonical layouts, but also a custom adaptive layouts. This is how the material pane system was born. It is the new way we recommend all makers to structure your apps to get support for automatic window level layout adaptations. To offer the material pane system in code, we investigated the problems of adaptive layout development. We identified four tasks which make adaptive layout development more complex than building a static layout. We learned that we need to make sure we stored and understood all conditions the layout needs to respond to. And we needed a navigation solution that treats an adaptive layout as a single destination and adapts the back stack as layout changes. We also needed to establish relationships for all of these panes across these window size classes. And we also wanted to provide a motion transition between them. Lastly, we learned that we needed to make sure that layouts can arrange the panes and apply adaptation strategies, which also created the necessity for a layout scaffold. Each of these four aspects of adaptive layout development became a layer of the new set of APIs that we're offering. These APIs codify the material pane system to make it easier for you to apply materials canonical layouts out of the box or make your own custom adaptive layouts. Get started today with the Material 3 Adaptive Library in Compose. Check out the Building UI with the new Material 3 Adaptive Library session to get an API deep dive after you finish learning the design rationale baked into the new library in this session. Javier, I think I'm still struggling to explain what exactly is a pain. Can you help me out here? It's a pain, Anisha. Uh, sure thing. Uh, so another way to think about this is a pane is a set of UI content that you can navigate to. Essentially, a pane is a layout container that groups components and elements inside of a window. Elements can scroll inside of a pane. A pane can resize all of other elements inside of it. And based on the window size class, we can show more or less panes. When we have more available space, we can establish a relationship between two or more by displaying them together in a window. Thank you, Javier. Mm -hmm. There are many benefits of using panes as the foundational unit for window level layouts. You can display related pieces of content alongside each other in larger windows. You can pick from and deploy adapt strategies that work across all the window size classes. And you get support for materials opinionated motion transitions. Plus with panes, you can also allow your users to navigate between different destinations within an app across multiple devices and you can let them manipulate panes and layout. As makers, you also get to rely on Android's established patterns for navigation, such as predictive back. Let's look at some examples of how panes unlock large screen optimized experiences through adaptive layouts. We are proud to announce that SAP is the first adopter of the Material 3 Adaptive Library. The SAP team optimized their user experience on large screens in the SAP Mobile Start app, which is the central entry point for all of their business applications, helping users quickly approve workflows and take decisions while on the go. So let's go through the journey of an SAP hiring manager as they go through their to-dos on SAP Mobile Start. 
On the phone, they open a hire request for an Android developer intern, which they need to approve. They scroll and open the comments pane to see what their coworkers are saying. It seems like the user needs to provide information on cost center allocation, so they reply to their coworkers' comment. That's a convenient approval workflow. However, SAP wanted to make it even simpler for the large screen by providing all of the information at a glance. So SAP leveraged material, the material pane system by applying supporting pane scaffold, which resulted in users getting more information on foldables and tablets. That's so much better. On tablets, the users can now reference the approval request information while engaging with the comments. Absolutely. SAP's use of supporting pane scaffold enables them to put two related panes next to each other, the primary pane with the intern hire approval request information and the secondary with the comments. This is great because once the user starts responding with their own comment, they can reference the context of the approval request and not have to go back and forth like they did on the phone. Exactly. SAP also used the Navigation Suite scaffold to optimize their users' large screen experience. With the Navigation Suite integrated into SAP Mobile Start, SAP customers are able to deliver to their users an appropriate navigation component at each window size class. Yes, the navigation bar on Compact becomes the navigation rail on Expanded and Medium. This is more seamless for the users as they move across devices. The SAP team found that integrating the supporting pane in SAP Mobile Start proved to be a great benefit to their users. And they're also eager to scale adoption of large screen support through SAP Fiori for Android design system. The Now in Android app uses List Detail, one of our canonical layouts. So on the phone, users can scroll through a list of interests, but they would have to open details of each one of these interests separately and go back and forth within the list. When the user is on expanded window size class, like a foldable, they can open the details pane side by side with the interest list pane. Exactly. So similarly, on tablet and expanded, the user has more space to learn the details of the composed list item they chose in the details pane. We have more examples for you illustrating how the material pane system improves a user's experience on large screens. First up, let's examine a couple common workflows in an email inbox. When the user first glances at the inbox on their phone, they see a list of emails. As makers, when we're building panes like this, we want the user to reap the benefits of the added space on large screens. So what we do is we apply list detail canonical layout to get the emails open in the detail pane, side by side with the list pane in expanded. OK, Javier, but I can do so much more on large screens. I want to multitask. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, panes can help you do that, Anisha. Let's take the email we were looking at in the detailed pane example. I want to respond to that, referencing a related doc. So I can open up the doc. Now in phone and compact, I'd have to go back and forth between the doc and the email. But in a foldable or a tablet in expanded, I can view the doc side by side with the email. So while I draft my response, I can reference the doc, scroll in it to fully digest what I want to put into my email. Can I focus on just the email and remove the list? <laughs> sure thing. So you can also drag the pane divider to make one of the panes take over the whole screen. We have one more example of applying these adaptive design principles to another app that shows how much value panes and adaptive layouts can unlock for your users. I'm having a dinner party. I want to share a grocery list from a recipes app with my friends so they can pick up ingredients on their way over. With the use of adaptive layouts, you can share without leaving the context of the recipe pane. Applying adaptive design, starting with panes, helps you reduce the level of effort you need to make your app adapt seamlessly across devices. You don't have to think about and design for what needs to happen on tablet versus foldable screens separately. And we give you this behavior out of the box with a Material 3 adaptive APIs, such as the list detail scaffold we just applied on the inbox example. To reap the benefits of adaptive layouts and components, start using the M3 Adaptive Library in Compose today. Head over to developer.android.com for documentation and guidance on the Material 3 Adaptive Library. Also, don't forget to watch the Building UI with Material 3 Adaptive session for an API deep dive and the Building Adaptive Android Apps for session for technical guidance. Thanks for watching.